Circles is a song that I released a few days ago. It's been very well received. Thank you all for your kind words. If you haven't seen it, it's on the card there. It's actually a little ironic though, because the song talks about wandering in circles and the endless race and whatnot, but the process of creating it was actually pretty quick. The whole process, from the very first melodic ideation to the final product, only took about four days, briefly interrupted by a trip to the mountains, which, suffice to say, I did enjoy. Now, this song originally was composed with a combo, a jazz combo, my jazz combo from the University of Puget Sound in mind. And we met right before break and we were like, okay, we're all going to arrange a tune, what are we going to do? And I decided I would arrange a ballad. So that's what I had going into it. I was like, I, I need to make something slow, I need to make a ballad. So I went with this slow 6-8 groove. It's not as slow as you can go with 6-8, but it's relatively slow with 6-8. 6-8 is one of those time signatures where um, it has a very wide range of speeds where you can still call it 6-8, you know, like that's still 6-8, but also that's also 6-8, and they're like, you know, the difference in speed is like four times there. But anyway, went with a slow 6-8 feel, and that's how it started. I just started with this 6-8 groove, like pasted some, you know, demo MIDI drums or whatever, and then I played piano to make a melody on it. Um, and then I actually end the song with playing that piano melody. Um, but that's how the song started. It started basically with the melody. I mean, it started with, what's the time signature? And then I made the melody, but I made the melody before the chords and I made the melody before the lyrics. And I think that was actually pretty important to the way that it all turned out. Starting with the melody actually kind of makes the process the same process as reharmonization, as if you've taken someone else's melody and are making a reharmonization, but in this case, you're taking your own melody and making the first original harmonization. But the process is the same as a reharmonization, basically. Um, and that made it quite interesting. I also, of course, wrote lyrics. Um, which is something that I've actually done before, like with La La Land, that song, Mia Sebastian's theme from La La Land, I not only did my own version of it, but I also wrote lyrics to that melody. I didn't reharmonize it, though. At first, I was thinking, you know, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, make a casual version with, like, a jazz trio, drums, piano, bass, so that my combo mates have something to listen to, since it's an original tune, and you want something to listen to if you're getting ready to perform it. So I was like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll do that. So that was always in my head that I was gonna do that, uh, but I, I never expected it until after I had written the lyrics, and I was like, oh, you know what, this is actually gonna be really good, or it could be really good. It was at that point where I realized I might make this into like a serious song and, and this might be one of my best songs. And in my opinion, it is one of my best songs. So uh, let's jump into the project, see what's going on. The first thing I want to look at here is this climax. Now the chords are this. But that's not really the point. The point is that we do start on this F sharp, you know, minor nine, but then it's really just voice leading from here to here, or maybe you could say from here to here. But what we do is we have this bottom voice in the right hand and the bass, they do chromatic contrary motion. And then we get this chord and then it goes back into this. And you're used to hearing this chord happen right before the melody, the A section melody restarts, which is why that, that transition works. You've actually never heard this chord transition happen before in the song, but you have heard this go into the melody. And you've also heard this at the beginning of the melody. So those two things come together to make this make that make sense. So. That's pretty cool. There's this part in here that you didn't see in the video. Yeah. So just some chromatic motion, and then it jumps a little bit. And that line just was, uh, was very cool. I thought that line was pretty clever. And basically it's just, you know, electric piano, which I can pull up here very quickly, just like that. Right? Um, and, and we have this piano line that goes, you know, to hit that bottom voice in the uh, chord that hits at the beginning of the climax. So we hit that. And then we just go. Now, at that note, where it hits that note, we're actually on this chord in the piano. 
on a D major 7, but adding the sharp 4 actually just makes it brighter if you add it on the top, because that's a sharp 11 then. Now, you can debate whether it's a sharp 4 or a sharp 11 in this case, um, but functionally it works, I think, more as a sharp 4. However, it leads right into this, and then into this, and that just makes that whole chromatic line work. And then you get up to this D, right, the top voice here of this chord, and that ties you back into the melody, of course, which starts on a D. So I, that line is just in there. It's very quiet. It's hard to make out. You probably didn't hear it the first time you watched it, uh, especially because you didn't expect anything else. You didn't expect electric piano because you didn't see it. Um, and you do see videos of all the other uh, performances, all the other instruments in the video. So that was that was very cool. You know, like this chord right here, right? Like that chord, the point of that is not to be, you know, a dominant seven with, with a sharp five and a, and a four. That's not the point. The point is just that this is a consequence of the voice leading where we do contrary motion with the bottom voice of the actual chord voice and the bass. And then we go back, right? So it's just a consequence of that. And so, you know, it looks like a gnarly chord and I suppose it is on its own, but as a consequence of the voice leading, it works quite well. It's right there. So. Right? Very cool. So here we are. Um, winter break is unfortunately coming to a close, and I'm going to head back down just in a couple hours, actually. I'm going to drive back down to, uh, to school. And so volume will be going down on this channel, um, unfortunately. But there's a new song coming this weekend, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's in a totally different vein from Circles, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I cannot wait. Um, I'll tell you this. It's called Almost Slipped. So... Who knows? Who knows what that means? I do, uh, but you will quite soon. Anyway, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but with that, I hope you've enjoyed Circles and this breakdown of Circles. And yeah, thanks for watching.